Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of the Friday Nightmares podcast, episode number 66. And on this episode, we are going to be talking about Ukrainian horror. I am one half of your hosting team this evening, Mr. Smoke Show Crawford, coming to you from the town of Sports Creek in the county of Genesee, in the state of Michigan, in the United States of America, in the North American continent, in the Western Hemisphere, on the planet Earth, in the Milky Way galaxy, fully vaxxed, boosted and waxed and ready to climax. And if you can, please get me wet, feed me after midnight. I'm the man with the glorious beard, a.k.a. Mother of Cats, a.k.a. the man with the humongous ego. (laughs) <laughs> God housing. And with me as always is Heather Powell from Waterdown, Ontario, Canada. The not so interesting half, even so much so of, of the Friday Nightmares team. Because they Bailey, or sorry, Sander is his stripper name, messaged <laughs> feedback and was like, I'm so glad, glad you liked that, Scott. You brought up a good point, Scott. Scott, 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 <laughs> Scott, 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 Scott. Marsha, Marsha, Marsha. Thanks, Sander. Thanks. Not, (laughs) Heather, why didn't you like the movie I suggested? It was fantasy. (laughs) Uh, But um, I'm just kidding. I'm just jealous that Sander's a lot smarter than me. Um, (laughs) And actually, shouts out to Sander. He's going to be working in a film festival again, which is great because he does give really solid reviews. You can listen to him and Android Virus on uh, Cemetery Gates podcast. Uh, They're on the infinite fortitude network intestinal fortitude intestinal fortitude network so give them a listen they're great both of them are very knowledgeable and i just tease sander he's dave sander yep. whatever he whatever he's going by today he's well, uh to be fair we tease both of them android and sander <laughs> yeah yeah that's true we do t- i do tease android too it's true um but sander's just more vocal so i yeah. i and we have a little chat group together actually we have him to thank for out of the dark segment that we'll get to in a little bit um but yeah so scotty do you have something to share with the class oh so apparently being fully vaxxed and boosted uh didn't uh officially help me protect myself fully because i did catch covid well I, you know you in three years scott exactly almost almost and i and i've done a lot of like shit out in public so i mean it's bound to happen i mean obviously yeah when you're vaccinated and get the booster shot you're not fully protected against it you're gonna there's still a chance of catching it it's just gonna be a much milder case and yeah it was mild for the most part like i had like one really rough day like that i uh woke up in the middle of the night like shivering and uh i threw in a bathroom and pajama pants and like covered myself back up and went back to bed woke up so we all know that now scott sleeps naked oh i sleep in my boxers Aw, see, you got everyone excited on the show. They were well, on. you know, mm. naked, naked is for Patreon only. Oh, that's right. <laughs> you watch Scott sleeping. <laughs> I, sp- I, I sleep spread ego with no covers. <laughs> and sometimes with my ass in the air, just for you. Yeah, just, just as he's waiting, he's like, Phil, Phil Ray, Phil, Phil. <laughs> Phil, where are you, buddy? <laughs> hey, man, you'd be lucky to get someone like Phil. He's right? fucking smoking hot. <laughs> Dude. <laughs> I'd be like the golden goose to get right there honestly yeah, no shit. Right? <laughs> um but yeah woke up like a couple hours later and i ended up like feeling like i was hit by a freaking truck like every muscle in my body was sore and i had no idea what the hell was going on so i just called into the work and just said i'm not coming in because i do not feel right and my boss, like, i have the consumption yeah i had the consumption but <laughs> my boss is very cool where she's like if you even feel slightly off call in she's like i don't want you bringing any type of sickness whether it's covid whether it's flu whether it's cold she's like if you're not feeling right don't come into work what common like, sense right and she's like you got you guys have sick days you guys have vacation days use them and I, yeah so i just did that and uh pretty much rested for a couple days uh my roommate tim being awesome as he was uh went shopping for me bought me a bunch of groceries so i could just stay isolated in the house and then he ended up uh making me a giant bowl of chili or a giant pot of chili just to make sure i could have something i could taste because i was mm-hmm. not sure if i was gonna lose my taste or not and nope never did lose the taste never well you've lose... lost your taste in movies but you oh. never had any taste. <laughs> <laughs> But I never lost my sense of smell or anything like that. And then I just felt off for a couple of days and then yeah, it went away. I tested uh, negative and uh, went back to work. And then a couple of days later, went to the theater. So I'm, Steve, I'm back at it again. He's back at it being American. American going to but, theaters. But I ended um, up watching a lot of movies because of it. You did. You were like a movie watching fucking king. I had to try to keep up with you. Yeah, and you um, did pretty well. <laughs> I did okay. But man, it was tough, Scott. You really set the bar this time around. 
how far we've come from you watching nothing yeah, or to two. watching <laughs> like a bunch. It's almost, it's no 2020 numbers. We'll never be back at 2020 numbers mm. again, but no. not, not enough hours of the day. Um, but it's definitely way better than it was before. Um, I've just yeah, I, don't, spending... I still don't think I'll even be at 2021 numbers. I think I'll be, oh, no. I think I'll be close. Cause I think I was at like 190 last year. And I think mm-hmm. I'll be at closer to like 150, 165, somewhere around there. Let's see. Where am I on in my list right now? All right. Let's pull up this list here. 125. Yeah. You'll, you'll easily get there. You hear that Tim Davis? 125. And Tim Davis, I'm at 98. What are you at, (laughs) bitch? Oh, and, you know, congratulations to you, Scott. We have a big announcement to make here on Friday Nightmares. Uh, Scott is the new reigning Raw Hungy Championship holder from Horror for Dummies. Take that, Rob. I meant to add that to my intro. Yeah, you forgot to add that. That's okay. We can... We can congratulate you, and we will be moving forward with a Friday Nightmares one night stand, which Tim apparently knows because I guess he went back and watched some videos to help him increase his wrestling knowledge as of late. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> we will have Mr. Rob Hungy. We will have Mr. Tim Davis. I don't know if Daniel will be able to join us. I hope so, but yeah, I know his schedule's all over the place. But at the minimum, it will be the four of us. And if you have ever listened to Horror for Dummy Wrestling, and when Tim goes, "Tell me if I'm wrong," you're gonna hear. You're gonna finally have a hero come from the ashes and tell Tim he's wrong, and it's gonna be great. Um, oh, it's gonna be hilarious. Did you and- know that Bird Box Two is coming out this year, Scott? It is a star in Tim Davis watching yeah. AEW. <laughs> Where is it? Where is it? I can't see anything. Oh, man. I, I, this projects have no story development because I closed my eyes halfway through and I turned off the sound. I don't know what's going on. I'm just kidding. Tim we is love absolutely, you, Tim. And he's not wrong. Like, I don't think AEW is a perfect product by any stance of the imagination. It's, it's not. I just think it's a lot better. So here's the thing for WWE. I listened to Tim and he's like, oh, Triple H is here and it's a whole new product. So I changed my answers for the prediction. So Horror for Dummies does this prediction where you predict who is going to lose wrestling matches. And I was like, oh, well, Tim says it's a new time. That means they're going to make logical decisions. Like Drew McIntyre is going to win in Wales because he's from England. So that's going to happen. That didn't happen. (laughs) I got majority of it wrong because I went with it being the new guard when it's all just the same old shit. Because (laughs) that's why I didn't give the answers I gave. And Um, and I thought it was, I, I thought it was funny. I was like, yeah, it's funny because that is why I am the reigning champion because of the answers I got, the predictions I got right on WWE, which is funny because I have not watched a episode of any Raw or SmackDown probably since 2001, 2002. And I just know the names. I know the product enough to know that, okay, so-and-so is going to win this, so-and-so is going to win this. Like, and it's sad that I got, I think, what was it, five out of the six correct? Well, here's the thing. I would have got six out of six. The reason I didn't, and I'm not blaming him for this at all. This was my choice. I chose not to watch WWE or read anything on it. When he said, oh, Triple H is in charge now. Things are going to be better. I thought they were going to be better. They're not. They're not better. Yeah, like, it's the like shit. The, the, results, <laughs> the results haven't changed, but like it does no. sound like there is uh, more wrestling and more story development now. Like, in what world do you go to someone's home country, or at least to the country before? beside it and have them lose yeah like in what world do you do that like it made absolutely no sense and it makes vince mcmahon sense right that's who sense it makes and so anyway next time i'm gonna not think that wwe is actually doing things better i'm just gonna go with my gut not that i want to take the championship from you i was just shocked at i'm like oh the change is coming and in all defense of tim i i didn't look into anything like i could have easily you know, I did bird box when it came to WWE. I didn't read anything about it and watch anything about it. I just went like, oh, well, Tim says that there's new, new changes. He, you know, this must be ABCD. And I was really surprised to see that hasn't happened yet. And that is not me blaming Tim for that. <laughs> no, I, I, think, I think with the whole Triple H thing, uh, he's got Shawn Michaels on now, like as like a uh, talent uh, coordinator. And I think we are going to see changes to make the product better. It's just, you got to shake off all the Vince McMahon shit still. Yeah, he probably signed some contracts with Roman and these guys to, you know, for a certain period of time, they'll, they'll hold the, the titles. Um, yep. So yeah, yeah, I think anyway. it's just, uh, it's slowly changing for the better from what I've been hearing. And yeah, I think, I think within a year's time, we will see like a good shakeup. 
right? Which is, and which I would is like good. to see that. Yeah, I would like because competition breeds better products. Well, you know what? It's like horror distribution companies, right? Like, you know, you 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 see different distributors that pick up horror films. Like we got the Blumhouse, we got the Uncorked, we got Asylum, we got um a24 we got a bunch of different stuff that's out there that distribute just different form f- films right different types of films we got yeah. other films that are independent that are a variety of distribution um people that are connected with them it's it's the same thing competition creates betterness for everybody um i haven't done anything too exciting over the last two weeks basically been hanging out with my friend's kids uh, my friend's parents were away so i was doing some uh want to say babysitting because i don't know hanging out with them is a better word to use because like they're not babies <laughs> and right you know they're they're fun to be around uh but yeah I, that and work and getting set up for uh the school year and stuff because i do work for a university and a college so that's been that's been up there um exciting thing that may happen scotty well for sure scotty's coming up here at the end of october and we're going oh, yeah. to haunted manor but possibly uh, Christian Luciani and Dave Z from Exploding Heads are going to come to Haunted Manor too, and that means that we'll have the Friday Nightmare podcast and the Exploding Heads together going through haunts. That will be. I can't awesome. think of anything more fun, and it would be such a pleasure to meet Dave Z in person. Oh hell yeah! Um, well, I'll have to bring some weed for him. <laughs> um, I'm not kidding. Oh I know, I know, I know you're not. <laughs> right, so. <clears throat> Um, I, he'll have to smoke it here though, because he can't bring it over the border. Yeah, don't I, bring it over the border, Dave. Don't, don't. It's not worth it, Dave. It's not worth it. Um, but yeah, I'm excited for that. That's probably the biggest thing that's happened besides watching these random movies. Yeah, I'm trying to think. I don't. Yeah, because I've been pretty much sick for like a week and a half. That's why our yeah. episode. That's why our last episode got released on Sunday because I was just not feeling up to editing or anything for a couple of days, and I just didn't have the energy. So. Yep. Now, like, I'm feeling better, though. Throughout this episode, you may hear me, like, sniffling or clearing my throat. That's because I'm still, like, getting rid of the crap in my body. That's just him crying over some of these 2022s that he wasted his time on. (laughs) Uh, Actually, look, I don't think there's a single... Well, okay, there's one that I was just like, ugh. And the others were... I'm wondering which one is, ugh. It'll be interesting as we get through them. Yeah, because everything else was okay to great. Well, you know, that's a good way to be. So I guess we might as well jump right in because we do have a lot to go through. Um, So the first one, I guess I'll start us off, is Beast. It is a 22-minute runtime. It's 93 minutes. It's been in the theaters. I can never say the main guy's name right. Can you say it for me? Idris Elba. Thank you. So he stars in it. He's probably the biggest star. Uh, Basically, the synopsis is this. A recently widowed man and his two teenage daughters traveled to a grain reserve in South Africa. However, their journey of healing soon soon turns into a fight for survival when a bloodthirsty lion starts to stalk them. Uh, This has a 2.7 rating on Letterboxd, and Tim Davis and Daniel reviewed this, and I think the review was actually really good from Horror for Dummies. Uh, I enjoyed it for what it was. That was my initial thoughts on it. I thought it was fun. You know, what you see is what you get here. It is a creature feature at its finest. Um, There's some CGI in it that some people may hate, may like. I don't know. You can't use real animals like lions. So you know, what right. else are you going to do, right? Um, I mean, I, yeah. <laughs> I was going to spoil another movie from just a couple months ago, but I'm not going to do that. <laughs> well, The Ghost in the Darkness is the other lion film that we have reviewed on here. And they used footage of lions, but you actually never really see the lion, I don't right. think. Well, you do at the end. At the end. But like, you know, here you get lions throughout the entire thing. So, you know, I get it. I I thought the actors did a great job of responding to the CGI. Um, I thought they were pretty impressive with that. And yeah, there's some like unbelievable things that happen, but it's a a fucking movie. Like, (laughs) you know? (laughs) Yeah, there are. uh, Yeah, because I was going to say, like, just go in, not expecting Jaws level of uh, when animals attack type film, but go in just. You know, with like with it in mind that this could be like kind of keep it in mind, like, OK, animal attack films from like the 70s and 80s. There were never any like high bar after Jaws. They were all just kind of like mediocre to entertaining. They're just simple, easy watches. That's what this is. It's nothing yeah. going to blow your mind. It's just fun. It's an animal attack film. We don't get those very often, like especially in theaters. And it was enjoyable. Like, yeah, we obviously you have to use CGI because like predator type animals. It's a big no-no to use on sets nowadays. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, like, you can't guarantee an actor's safety <laughs> or the animal's safety. Yeah. Anybody's safety, right? So, yeah, I don't know. I think this is worth a rental. I think if yeah. you like animal attack films and 
it's your jam. I, I would definitely pay $3.99, $4.99. It's available through iTunes, Google, Amazon, YouTube, and uh, Microsoft Store. I, I, I definitely enjoyed it. And Cineplex in Canada as well. You can rent it off of Cineplex. Um, yeah, like I, if I went to the theater to see this, I wouldn't have been upset. No, I thought it was, I thought it was a fun little film. Um, but yeah, I get that the CGI, I'm thinking of Daniel from uh, Horror for Dummies. Like, I understand what he's saying. Like, I, yeah. it's not the best cgi in the entire planet but you know i don't and maybe this will hit someone's list hey if it does awesome like if you liked it that much good for you i will say i had a good time with it and i enjoyed it for what it was i thought it was perfect runtime didn't overstay its welcome you know and i like you know there's there's certain people that get their canuppins in this and i was very happy about that right um and that's that is something i dug yeah, I'll say same. It was uh, just a fun watch. Yeah. Uh, and then, yeah, I'll get to the next film because this one I believe you have not seen yet. No, and, and I was so disappointed when I heard your review of it because... Yeah, this is yeah. my ugh film. Yeah, it's a shame. So this is Where the Scary Things Are. Uh, the synopsis is, the horror begins as Ayla and her high school friends discover a hideous semi-human mutant. They keep it prisoner while shooting repulsive viral videos, but the gang's hunger for likes drives them to film the beast performing murderous acts. When one boy sees that Ayla is using the monster's gruesome violence to settle her own vendettas, he threatens to tell the authorities, but he is too late to save, but is he too late to save his friends? Um, yeah, like this had a cool concept. The trailer looked pretty decent. Uh, it had like, it was basically like kind of like a, uh, viral urban legend type thing that they were trying to do for class and, it was really cool concept. The monster looks cool in this. However, the acting is just so painful from these kids. Like, mm -hmm. I don't, I think it's I think it's purposely done because you're supposed to not like them, and they do a good job in that aspect. But at the same time, it was like way too fucking much. Like, and it just I don't know if it was just like uh, the lack of talent or what, but it was something about it just grated on me. Like I hated every one of these characters. I just couldn't stand listening to them talk. Couldn't stand anything. The only thing I really liked was the concept of the film and the monster. Like this movie just, it was a chore to sit through. It was longer than it needed to be. See, um, it's, in it's interesting that you mentioned about the acting because I think you remember when we watched Slashback, the one about the, um, in you, the, um, the main you, in the community or you, you didn't watch see that. that i haven't seen it yet oh, okay so you need to watch that because the kids in that movie um they weren't actors someone came in and trained them how to act oh really they used kids from the actual community so watch that and see how those kids do because i didn't know that until my friend who's very um invested in indigenous culture here in canada told me about the movie and said yeah they brought in an acting coach oh wow and they used actually the kids from the community to do this and i was like that's pretty these kids are pretty fucking good like that's actually pretty impressive so when you watch that movie tell me if it's better for from where the scary things are okay if you think the acting's better i'll be interested to see what you think um, All right, yeah, I definitely will. Because, yeah, like, this one was just, like I say, I think it was a mixture of just the acting being bad and then the characters being completely unlikable shits. Yeah, and would you recommend it? Uh, if you can find it streaming for free. Okay. I wouldn't pay for it. Okay. Um, so but right now, is... it's not streaming for free. It can be found on iTunes, Google Play, Vudu, Amazon, and DirecTV. Okay. So maybe on DirecTV, it might be free. Okay, so unless you have it for free, don't bother? Yeah, I was not a big fan of this one. Like okay. I ended up uh I ended up giving it two and a half stars, but that's just because the movie was well made. It was yeah. just the acting when and the characters just awful. It made it from be it basically was just average. I didn't hate my time with it, but I did hate the characters. <laughs> okay. Yeah, it sounds like it was a chore to get through, which is frustrating. Yeah, and even uh, Xander gave it two out of five stars. Oh wow. And wow. our friend uh Doninelli only gave it a half star. Oh, oh dear, that's not looking good. <laughs> no. Well, that's a good thing I'm coming in with this Academy Award winning <laughs> film. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, I would like to present Shark Side of the Moon, a Tubi original. Uh, it's an 88 minute runtime. These sharks, there are there are shark people on the moon. Decades ago, the USSR developed an unkillable sharks and launched them into the moon. Today, a team of American astronauts will endure the fight of their life. This was a lot of fucking fun. 
Um, I, first of all, let me say the sharks men in this because well, you can see from the cover that's what it is. Yeah, are actually pretty good looking. Like they actually don't look that bad. Really? Um, nice. Yeah, they don't look that bad. Like this is very much a cheesy scientific science fiction film. Like you know, almost like a cheesy 1960s, 70s, dumb science fiction thing, or maybe the 50s. Honestly, if you walk into this movie expecting, like, shark men living on the moon, you won't be disappointed. Like, it's free watch on Tubi. If this sounds like something that's up your alley, if you are like, oh, I like the silly and the bizarre, and I know this is going to be a really just dumb movie to sit through and watch, in the sense, like, it's a dumb concept, but it actually takes itself seriously enough that you can follow along with what's going on. And it's cheesy. Like, I could see Lucas David, Lucas, Lucas Davison, did I say his name, last name right? Uh, I think it's, it's Dickinson. Dickinson. Dickinson, sorry, Luke, Lucas. Um, he gave it five stars. Oh, he loved it. And I could it. totally see why. And his review is this. So we're going to just read his review. For pure entertainment value, this is perfect. It's so damn stupid and silly, and all the effects and actions are ridiculous and shitty looking. The pot is utterly batshit. It's so damn funny. I loved it. On the acting side, it's mostly bad, but there's two characters that turn in a generally good performance despite everything else being so silly. I'll say this this sits firmly atop of the head of the crappy shark movies. Sci-fi can kiss the ass of Tubi in the asylum. And I agree. Like I think it's I think he's that's like the best definition I've heard or review of this film. It's it is what it is. It's a free watch on Tubi. If you want to watch some silly silly man sharks running around, this is the film for you. Nice. Yeah, I, I still want to watch this because obviously we do like we're doing the Tubi original stuff. I think I have like three I still need to watch. Toe yeah. this one and one more. I can't remember off the top of my head. Like and plus whatever they come out with by the end of the year. Yeah, yeah, they're coming out fast and furious, so. I love it. <clears throat> One could say they're too fast. Too furious. Too furious. <laughs> I love it. Right. All right, uh, so the next film I know both of us had watched, uh, and that is Spirit Halloween, the movie. <laughs> a group of middle schoolers discover a Spirit Halloween store is haunted and must survive the night. Uh, the stars Christopher Lloyd, and this is basically like along the lines of like you know introductory horror, so uh, Ernest Scared Stupid, Hocus Pocus, stuff along those lines. Um, this was really fun, especially when you go into it knowing that you know this is like introductory horror for young mm-hmm. teens, young adults. Uh, Christopher Lloyd just chews up the scenery like he always fucking does. He's just incredible. This that man is a freaking treasure. I love him to death. Everything he's in, he's always entertaining, and he yeah. He still has it in this film. Uh, he's not physically in the film much. It's more just his voice, but it is still highly entertaining. And it's cool because they are literally filming inside of a Spirit Halloween store. So if you've been inside a Spirit Halloween, you're going, oh, yeah, this all looks very familiar. <laughs> And, and it's uh, interesting because they don't say the they don't call the sport the store ever Spirit Halloween. Well, they, they say uh, the Halloween store. Yeah, they sell Halloween store, and then they show like you see the banner. Yeah, for Spirit Halloween. Yeah, like it's totally you could tell that obviously Spirit Halloween was involved in the production of this and made money. And it's a great like there's one part where they just walk around the store, and you can tell it's like a big commercial for Spirit Halloween. Yeah, um, which is fine. Like that's what you would expect. Like. Yeah, but it looks it's, like they. Uh, yeah, it looks like they avoided showing any of the uh, copyrighted stuff that Spirit yes. Halloween has, like yeah. Nightmare on Elm Street stuff, Pennywise, yes. but like their original type spooky Halloween shits out there. Yeah, like they're like an animatronics and like random stuff like that. Like that was smart. Like they did a really really good job of using the Spirit Halloween and Rachel Lee Cooks in this. Uh, she oh, plays yeah. the mom, right? That so, is her. Holy shit, okay. Yeah, that is her, right? So it it was it's definitely this is a kid's film. Like go into this knowing that it's like a step above Hubie Halloween. Like it is it is better, I think, than Hubie Halloween. Oh, absolutely, yeah. <laughs> um, I think it's you know, you notice I saw something really funny today on on uh Facebook. It was like this year we celebrate 29 years of pretending that Hocus Pocus is a good movie. <laughs> oh, God, yeah. And I'm like, oh, oh fuck funny. you. Because <laughs> that movie's You great. know, <laughs> it, 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 it is what it is for when it came out, right? And I think that it's a kid's movie much like this is a kid's movie. Oh, exactly, yeah. If right, you, so... This is something you can watch if you have children. Like, you can watch this with them. You will have a... 
you'll have just as much fun as them. Yeah, like it's an 87 minute runtime and yeah, it's a little cheesy and and yeah, like it's, I don't know, I would say if you've got kids under the age of 12, they'll probably enjoy this. Older than that, they're probably going to think it's stupid. So, you know, know your kid, but there's nothing to be concerned about here. There's no, there's no like, I don't know, swearing and there's not a lot of, I don't think there's even any blood. No. Right? Like it's, it's just a, it's just kind of a ghost story and it's, it's good. It's good. Yeah. It's a fun little um, film. And I say it, it's not available yet anywhere. Uh, what we had was a screener copy because you could even yeah. see the property of type yeah. screener thing in the bottom of the screen. So we were lucky enough to watch a screener copy of it. But yeah, when this does come out, I definitely recommend it. Yeah, I, I think it's rent a lot it. of fun. I like, especially if you're having like kids over for a Halloween party or maybe like you want to throw something on after trick or treating or lean up to Halloween. Absolutely. I put this movie on. Yeah, like I think it would be great for kids. Yeah. And I was saying it's perfect if you're just wanting to watch a Halloween themed movie. Yeah. It's fluffy. It's fun. It's like, just go into it knowing it's a kid's film and fuck exactly. sakes, don't complain about it. It's a fucking children's film. Fuck sakes. Like it's supposed to be cheesy and like dumb lines and kids doing dumb things. That's, that's what it's supposed to be. This isn't no fucking it. Okay. Right. <laughs> All right. So anyway, uh, is it my turn to do the next one? Yes, it, it is. is. Right. It's Margo, right? Yep. So this one, Margo, I believe it's a, um, what do we call it? On demand release? Yeah, I believe so. I don't think it's had a theatrical release anywhere. No. No. Um, this is 105 minute runtime. Uh, the synopsis is as a group of seniors from college celebrate their final college days uh, at a smart house, the house highly ad- the house's highly advanced AI system, Margot began to take on a deadly presence. Um, yeah, like you get the, like that's not really a spoiler because to be honest with you, there's an opening scene with uh, one of our favorite guys from Scary Movie. What's yep. his name? Is it Lachlan Moreau? Uh, I think that's how I say his name, Lachlan Moreau. I'm looking at it right here. Oh yeah, um, Lachlan, yep. Lachlan Moreau. <laughs> So if you've seen him and other stuff before, you'll recognize him here. And right away, you know, spoiler, it's in the first fucking two minutes. The house is, you know, scary. So yeah, very smart and uh, is in control of everything. Yes. It kind of reminds me of another AI film that came out years ago where a little slower, though, of a film where they created a robot and she, yeah, you know, which uh, one, Ex Machina. No, not Ex Machina. Um, you're thinking the low budget one. No, this one had like money to it. Oh, okay, so then, yeah, you're thinking X Machine. I was thinking yeah. the low-budget one that we watched in 2020. With, like, oh, that, that one. Like, oh, that was good, too. Yeah. Yeah, that was good, too. Um, I forgot about that one. Um, no, oh, that was funny. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, I forgot all about that one. But, yeah, this is this is a pretty entertaining film. Like, the characters are pretty vapid. Like, you get what you get. You know, it's a fairly predictable plot of who all the characters are and what their roles are. But it's cool shit that happens in this house. I don't know. What did you think, Scotty? Oh, I had a blast with this. There's there is some questionable CGI at points with like yeah. these robotic arms that kind of like materialize <laughs> out of the like the counters and stuff like that. Cause basically this house is a giant 3D printer, is what Margot tells them. So yeah. it can print things and but like yeah, sometimes the CGI looks off, but it's not horrible and not enough to take you out of the film. But yeah, this is this was pure, just fun, gory, uh Especially those first few minutes, I did not expect it to be as gory as it was going to be. Oh, going, man, oh, it was shit. great. It was great. <laughs> that first fucking five minutes of the movie is fucking excellent. Uh, yeah, though I do have some questions of what happened to allow other people to keep coming there. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. But I guess that, you know, I don't know. Margo must maintain everything, including That's kind of what I'm thinking and too, everything like, else, right? Yeah. So. But no, like this is just a lot of fun. Uh, some some uh unique kills uh and like i would love to have a smart house like this minus it being a killer <laughs> you know i thought it was really clever how it plays on like the google and alexis thing because my neighbor has alexis and she'll always be like alexis play this or it will be like at my friend neighbor and Dave says they have google and they'll be like google what is this and then google gives information right right um and remind it kind of makes me second guess that stuff you know not yeah. that i'm like anti-technology don't get me wrong I, I and i'm fine with being stalked by the way it doesn't offend me when i get advertisements that are geared towards what i talked about as long as the shit i like stalk me properly yeah um that's me that's my own personal perspective on it the moment you put your stuff out on the internet you lose all privacy right exactly privacy, right um, but I thought that was fun. I thought it was smart that they played on this. Um, it's available for I on iTunes, Google, Amazon, Microsoft Store, YouTube. I think it's worth any rental price. Honestly, it's a fun, gory time. Oh, it absolutely is. Yeah. Right. Uh, yeah. Great kills. You said that up 
you know, great tail- kills, entertaining, moves quickly. You know, it's a good film. Yeah, I'll say, like, this is definitely worth the rental, for sure. It almost feels like a Bloomhouse film, doesn't it? It kind of does, yeah. Right, but it wasn't. I think it was Paramount. Yeah, I think it was, actually. Yeah, Paramount. Right? I think it was Paramount. So, yeah, anyway, it was interesting. Yeah, so both uh, an endorsement from Scotty and I. Yep, and uh, we will jump into the next one that I know both of us have also watched. Uh, this one is called Tiny Cinema, and it is an anthology movie. A mysterious stranger tells the twisted tale of seemingly unconnected strangers caught in a series of otherworldly events whose lives will change in incredible ways forever. Uh, it's an 84-minute runtime, so it, this is a super easy, fun anthology to watch. Like th- I found every story in this to be entertaining and some of them fucking hilarious. <laughs> Oh man, this was great. And Tim Davis will like it a lot. You know why? Um, um have you listened to Horror for Dummies and Tim's love for Oh small people? yes. For mm-hmm. small people? Yes. 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 <laughs> listen in caution when you listen to that episode of Horror for Dummies. <laughs> um but yeah, the the gentleman who tells the story is a little person. Yep. Um and he actually is a really good host. I don't actually, I want to look up his name. Like, I recognize him. I don't know why, but I recognize him from something. I think it's Austin Lewis. Um, because I think he's the one that tells the story as it goes. And he is, he's excellent. Like he's a really good little storyteller and like, oh my God, I didn't mean it like that. It's a very good (laughs) storyteller. Oh my God, Heather, that came out so badly. You might as well leave it in though, Scott, so people can see my like, (laughs) pause. What I meant was he has a a limited part in the, each story, right? He obviously just introduces it, kind of gives like what the creep keeper would do. Uh, towards any story is like it's a small part to introduce right he doesn't yeah. have a large role in this film but the role that he does have in it he starts off the stories really really well and I appreciate that I think it I think it's a good way to blend them together because sometimes in anthologies when you don't have that person to blend it together it doesn't it kind work of, like well. it doesn't work as well right so sometimes you do need a really effective role where they're just piecing it together and I thought that you know Austin did that really well yeah, because like anthologies either need anthologies either need a good wraparound story or a good narrator to break up the stories. Right. Um, I thought the first story was probably the funniest to me. Like, I'm trying to remember what was that one? That's what she said. Oh yeah. <laughs> Like, it's really, really funny. And I I honestly thought that you're right. Like, and the last one at the end with uh, the date at the, at the bar and then. Yeah. Yeah. I also liked uh, the one where the friends are trying to help their other friends. Oh my God, that's super (laughs) funny. Was there anyone you didn't like? I'm trying to remember. I don't think there was one I didn't dislike. Yeah, like I thought they were all really, really clever, to be honest with you. Yeah, they were all entertaining and some of them were pretty damn funny. Like I like I yeah. I don't remember disliking any of them. Yeah, I thought they were all really well done. And I recommend this anthology. I think that this will be you will be at a miss if you don't watch this anthology this year. Yeah, I say I think you may like it more than me because I, I had a feeling when I watched this, I'm going, this is totally up Heather's alley. Oh like, man, it was so funny. <laughs> like, I, like the comedy, I was like, "This is Heather's comedy to a fucking T." Like, right? I knew that, and I was like, "I think she's gonna like this more than I did," and I and I still really liked it. Like, this is the best anthology but, oh, we've got this year, which is not saying down. much, obviously, but yeah, it's still like it is definitely one that if you are a fan of anthologies, check this out. Absolutely, and if you're Tim Davis, check this out so you have more material for your horror for dummies show. <laughs> yes. Um, <laughs> It's available on Amazon, iTunes, Google, YouTube, and Microsoft Office. Um, Microsoft Store. I always say Microsoft Office at least. You can, buy, one you can watch it on Word. Watch it on Word and PowerPoint. No, yep. it's definitely worth whatever rental you pay for it. Three ninety nine, four ninety nine, five ninety nine. Agreed. Definitely worth it. Yeah. Oh, wait, did you see this one? Not yet. So I'm curious uh, to hear your thoughts. Okay, a lot of people like this movie, and I didn't. So, um, what Josiah saw. It is a 120 minute runtime. It is available on the shutter. It is basically an anthology kind of wrapped up as a feature length film. Hmm. So there's different, you get to see the story of different family members and then how it comes down to this big secret that's revealed. I personally found this boring. Okay, because that is, I've heard a lot of good and I've heard that also, that Um, some people thought it was boring. I found that the payoffs of each story didn't do it for me in terms of the connecting back. I think the acting in this is fucking phenomenal. I think the actors do a great job 
It is no criticism to the acting. And I think it's a good movie. It just wasn't my thing. You know, it, I feel like this is another example of St. Maud or The Lodge where a lot of people liked it and I just didn't. Okay. What would you, do you think I would? Um, I have no idea. Okay. You would have to watch it and see. I, I just couldn't get into it. I found yes, myself okay. picking up my phone. Like I watched this on like TV downstairs right. and I was not interested at all. Okay. It was very challenging for me to get through. That doesn't mean it's a bad film. It could mean I wasn't in the right state of mind watching it. Um, I was tired. I had been really busy. So maybe that's it. And the pacing was just not for me. Um, yet again, everybody's different, you know, definitely not a poorly made movie though. And definitely not poorly acted. So, you know, props to whoever created this film i'm not going to sit here and shit on it i'm just going to say i didn't enjoy it uh that doesn't mean other people want it is available on all the shutters um if you have the shutter nice yeah i'll say i'll I'll watch this just to see what i like see what i think of it at some point um but yeah we'll jump into the next one which uh i know both of us have seen uh because i i oh yeah yeah you got me to watch it yeah so this one is called house of darkness Driving home to her secluded estate after meeting at a local bar, a player out to score thinks his beautiful, mysterious date will be another casual hookup. While getting acquainted, their flirtation turns playful, sexy, and sinister. Hoping to get lucky, his luck may have just run out. Uh, This stars uh, Justin Long and Kate Bosworth. Holy shit, this was such a wonderful surprise for me. Like, I went in knowing nothing. Like I didn't even read a, didn't watch a trailer, didn't read the synopsis. I was just like, "Ooh, the cover looks interesting. I'll throw this on." And wow, I had so much fun with this. Like it is Justin Long and Kate Bosworth. Like do so, have such great chemistry together in this. Good film. actors. Okay, I'm gonna be honest with you. If this was anyone else in this film, this film would have sucked. Yeah. All right. Like let's be real here. They casted two people with fucking acting chops that pulled off these characters. If not, this film would have been boring as fuck. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because like, because not a lot really happens no, for like it's a good hour. It's dialogue heavy, and yeah. you're basically watching two people who are kind of meeting for the first time, and the awkwardness between them. And I, I think Justin Long, you know, I know he kind of plays one character, but he plays that character well, and he fucking played that character here really well. Yeah, well, I'll say like he play, he technically plays two. He plays like the nerdy dork, and then he also plays the fucking uh, asshole. Yeah, I guess you're right. That's that is true. That's what like he plays, his his right? horror characters tend to be his asshole characters, and his yeah. comedy characters seem to be the like lovable dork. Oh, except Tusk. Oh my god. Well, that that <laughs> would sit in the horror genre. So like, oh, it does. Asshole. No, absolutely. I just <laughs> I'm one but, with the walrus. Sorry. <laughs> but I have to say, like. <laughs> I actually seen a meme recently uh, saying that is Justin Long the this generation scream queen. I'm like, yeah. I mean, he's been in Jeepers Creepers, uh, Drag Me to Hell, uh, House of Darkness, Tusk. Tusk. Uh, which I'm the only one in the world that likes that fucking movie. <laughs> which there sounds like there might be a sequel coming out. Oh, man, I hope Justin Long's in that one too. I think he might be too. But uh, <laughs> fucking walrus costume anyway. <laughs> But yeah, this movie, I really just dug it because, yeah, it, like, it made me feel uncomfortable and awkward because yeah. they are having those weird, awkward conversations where they meet for the first time. And Kate Bosworth is, like, toying with Justin Long, like, with the, like, questions she's asking. Like, she just, like, kind of, like, enjoys asking the awkward questions type Oh, of yeah, she totally does. And, and it's I, so I called it, though, from the moment he showed up, what was going on. Oh, it's very. I'll be pretty- honest. Like I was like, uh huh. <laughs> but but the dialogue is mwah. Yeah, I was gonna say that is one thing I will say about this movie is this doesn't break any new ground. It is very paint by numbers. You know what's going on. You know what's gonna happen. But it's just the watching it unfold between these two characters is wonderful. And to me, it actually felt like a full length tales from the crypt episode right like that's like that like that is the vibe i got through the entire movie like the way it plays out and the way it ends it all feels just like a tales from the crypt episode right fuck i loved the shit out of this uh i gave it a nine out of ten and it's in my top ten right now oh man i i i don't i think that it will win possibly some awards for me i would consider that these two had a relationship uh, even though it was just for the film, um, I I really, 
yeah, this was a good fucking movie. I would say I definitely recommend people watch it because it is not, it it comes across being possibly being boring, but because Justin Long plays such a good like guy who's obviously a piece of shit pretending not to be a piece of shit. <laughs> Yeah, like, this is great. He plays a player that thinks he's smoother than he actually is. Like when he he drops a certain line at the end of this movie. Oh yeah, <laughs> and I was just like, wow. Like the way he delivers it is just yeah. I I really like Justin Long, and I I think he's great here. And I think uh, Gina is also uh, excellent. Gina uh, Cov- Covani. Oh yes, yep. I thought she was. I thought she was great too. Yeah, this is definitely a high recommend from both of us, it sounds like. Yeah, (laughs) Yeah, it was a good film. You know, it's available on iTunes. Did you say where it's available? No, I was going to say it's for me, uh, for the U.S., uh, it's available Amazon Video, DirecTV, and Microsoft Store. Yeah, it's available for iTunes for us here in Canada as well. Okay. um, Definitely worth a rental if what we describe sounds like it's your thing. Yeah, like this is a lot of fun. Uh, Now something that's, that I, (laughs) yeah. um, (laughs) Yep. So uh, shout out to Mike Merriam and I'm in a chat group with Mike Merriman uh, from Fresh Cuts. And he uh, he mentioned this anthology and was asking a friend if he had seen it yet. And I was like, oh, so when I saw it pop up, I'm like, oh, that's the anthology that Mike was talking about. I'll watch it. Uh, it's called The Red Book Ritual. <laughs> kind of reminded me of a 100 Candle game last year, too. Do you remember yeah. the 100 Candle game? Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's a 20 it's an 83 minute run time run time every page is a new way to die <laughs> three friends decide to play the red book game shock faint uh what they don't know is that in the house evil is waiting to be released shock faint um <laughs> a long time ago a witch died shock faint um every question they ask they get closer and closer to her shock faint uh <laughs> the book will read the answers to shock all faint. your questions shock faint <laughs> But will you, you know, meet its thirst for blood? Shock faint. Shock faint. So this is very much a paint by number anthology. I will be honest. There was one story in this that really got to me. Ooh, which one? The one in the hospital. Uh, okay. I thought that was actually really well done. Yeah. I thought the message behind that story was really well done. The stories actually aren't that bad. They're actually quite emotional. Um, there's one where I think if it hadn't been dubbed, it would have been a lot better. Yeah, because the dubbing was awful in that one. Like, I think if it had been, I believe they were speaking Mandarin. Mm -hmm. If they had just done English subtitles, I think it would have been more effective. Yeah. Um, Because it had the presentation to be creepy. What was happening on screen was creepy. Yep. The problem was the dubbing was making it sound like a circus show. Especially the dubbing of the child, which I am going oh, to yeah. say for anybody that has seen House by the Cemetery, the dubbing reminded me of Bob. Yeah, it was the bad. Kid. It was just like, oh, cringe, awful. Honestly, I didn't think these stories were that bad. I thought the first one was, you know, mediocre. I thought that the second one was, I, I think they were exploring human emotions really well. I'll be honest. I don't think this was the worst one. I think that dubbing one really pulled it down. I think if they had used subtitles, this would be a medium watch for me. It would be my second favorite anthology of the year. Okay. Um, yeah. Because I, I personally, that, that story in the hospital, I thought was really, really well done and a good message behind it. Yeah, I was going to say, because I think that's the only story that I really cared for. Um, Mm. For me, the stories were fine, very forgettable for the most part, but like where, you know, like it's not forgettable as in they were bad, just like they were just kind of there. The problem I had is it seemed like the story started and then just ended out of nowhere and it ended in weird spots and like each story just didn't seem to have a fleshed out ending, just kind of for the hospital one. Yeah. But yeah, most of them just like kind of yeah. abruptly stop, and I'm just going, uh, "What? What just happened? What? Oh, we're oh we're back with the characters reading the book. What? What, what just happened? Like I was confused. Yeah, like, it just kind of just stop out of nowhere and go back to the wraparound, and I'm like really didn't know why they did that. Like wish they would have, yeah. because obviously you could have at least try to cap off each story with some type of ending, unless there was a reason for the story to abruptly stop like the characters telling the story get interrupted in the wraparound or something right right but yeah Um, there just wasn't anything there just eh. yeah i liked it more than you did i would probably give it three and a half out of five where i think you gave it two um and i think i just liked the stories more um and that's fine you know you know what i mean like not every I think I was entertained with it. The 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 wraparound was horrible though. 
it was yeah. not good. And the acting in it was not good. Uh, but it's available on iTunes and Amazon. If you're like me and you really like anthologies and I don't know, maybe you side with me more on things than with Scott, rent it. If not, then skip over it. Yeah, because um, you know me, I also really love anthologies. But yeah, this one just didn't. It didn't work for him. Like, yeah. it, so if it, I don't know, if you find shit like, I'm more of the social, like, not that Scott's not like, okay, so it's like Scott might like something that's more fantasy based yep. than I would. I tend to like social political shit a lot. Like there's one story particularly that talks about um, miscarriage Mm -hmm. and I kind of got what the other meaning was supposed to be with that. And that, or what I interpreted it as, maybe that wasn't what they meant it as. And maybe I'm just looking deeper into it than it needs. So that spoke to me. Um, I thought that the first story was really entertaining with the animals that were in it. Um, But yet again, like different folks, like Scott may watch what Josiah saw and really like it, you know, like it's, it's sometimes we see eye to eye. Sometimes we don't. Um, Exactly. I just happen to like this one a little bit more. I wouldn't say it's like the best movie ever. I just enjoyed it a little more thoroughly. Yeah. I'm glad, I'm glad that you did at least. Cause like, yeah. Cause when I seen you were watching, I'm going, I kind of didn't like that. I didn't give this high praise. So I think she's kind of just going and going, let's see what happens. (laughs) Yeah. I I know. And like, I I liked it. I don't know. I liked it enough. Yeah. That's good. I like that. Like, and it's, it's always nice when we can have like a little bit of a varying opinion on a thing. Exactly. Right. Like uh, this next film, I have a feeling when you watch this one, you'll like it. It just won't be nearly as high as it is for me. (laughs) Uh, So this one is the one I went to go see in theaters, and I just went to see it last night because I have been hearing nothing but praise for this film. And when I seen a trailer in theaters for, I'd say about a month ago, I was going, eh, this looks pretty decent. Like, But I got to say, they did a great job because the trailer doesn't give you enough to go off of because this movie went in directions I did not expect. Really? Uh, yeah, so this movie is called Barbarian. Holy fucking shit, this movie is insane. Um, This is, I will give a very small synopsis. Um, It is basically this woman arrives to an Airbnb where there ends up being someone else that has already booked the Airbnb as well. So the the Airbnb is double booked. So kind of like the premise that we saw in another film, but only like it was really double booked. Yes. You know which one I'm talking about? One, the one with the Renona Ryder earlier that we watched? Yes, yes. Yeah. Yeah, well, and this one is also really double book. Oh, okay, okay. But um, but no, like, um, uh, but that is, and like when they kind of arrive and they kind of you know introduce the characters, then the story goes in directions that you will not freaking figure out. Really? Yeah. Like, wow, holy fucking shit! Like, because I'm sitting here going, okay, I see where this is going, and then it gets going, and I'm going, what the fuck? What? holy okay no did not expect that (laughs) and it uh this movie is fucking incredible um i think i may also have a little bias towards it because uh i it is filmed in detroit and i actually recognized a lot of the locations that it was filmed in nice that's cool i have been to some of these areas and uh yeah it i will tell tell the audience that has seen this that block that that uh the movie takes place on is exactly like that and is as scary as you fucking think it's I'm sure it's a sad because that's what Detroit's like in like the outskirt areas, but it does make for amazing horror settings and holy shit. Yeah. And everyone go see this movie. This is one of the best films I've seen this year. It is a 10 out of 10. It is, it is incredible. And it'll take you do not, do not read up on anything about this. Go in as blind as possible. Cause this movie fucking comes at you from some directions that you do not expect. Uh, it's got a very awesome film style reminded me of uh, Hitchcock in a lot of ways. Yeah. So like the way it's filmed and directed, which also is directed by one of the uh, actors from the whitest kids, you know, sketch comedy which was a nice shock. I did not realize that. And once again, comedy actor, directing, horror, beautiful. And this is definitely like a nice homage to like horror of the 80s and shit like that. It is fucked up. It is awesome. It is gory. It is creepy. It stars Bill Skarsgård um, and many other names, but I will not bring those up because that is part of the surprise. 
Well, it's you've intrigued me. And Rob said that you were wrong if you didn't like it. So yeah, and Dave you know, Bailey told me I needed to see this, and he would refund my mm, money if I did not. Andrew, like it. Andrew, I'll refund <laughs> Scott's money because I only like Scott. Mm. Well, he even told you he thinks that I would have liked it more than you. He said he thought you would. You like know what? It. Now it's gonna be my fucking number one, Sander. How do you like that? <laughs> How you like that, Sander? I haven't even seen it yet. It's my number one film of the year. <laughs> but yeah, uh, and also, I got to say this about the film, too. I had sent this in our chat yesterday. This gave me the feeling that Hereditary did. After I got out of the theater, I just kind of sat in my car, just kind of processing it, going, what the fuck did I You had a big Scott watch? Crawford? I was sitting there going, I'm a Scott Crawford. I'm Scott Crawford. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I Tim's literally like, just oh, sat yeah. there. <laughs> fantasizing now oh but no, i I'll never sat- watch the barbarian the same <laughs> but no i literally just sat there just going what the fuck did i just see like this is something you would not expect to see on the big screen i feel the same way when i drive into the states <laughs> <laughs> i mean that's that's fair like what the fuck oh ray america fuck buildings yeah. on fire fucking uh, you know basically a battlefield all times battlefields like it's like 1812 all the time for you guys nothing's changed yeah. <laughs> just constantly <laughs> nothing changes nothing changes uh so that's our 22 2022 watches uh hopefully we've given you something to take away with and watch two anthologies this time around which was nice yeah um you know another to be original which seems to be every every time we you know record one of us has watched the tubi original so <laughs> right? Tubi just keeps like putting out man good for you tubi don't you know, hold we back love tubi. It when you put out we sure do we sure do um for my older watches i had to go back in time because i didn't get a chance to watch an older movie but luckily i've watched so many movies this year that it's okay uh i watched the movie called down and this was part of when you know when the bloom house did their like uh halloween's or their holiday specials what yeah. was that under out of the dark right? uh, or into yeah, the dark. For, like hulu yeah out of the dark yeah, or is it Into the Dark? Yeah, sorry, Into the Dark. Into, dark, into the Dark. Into yeah, Art of the Dark's our segment, right? <laughs> yeah, we ripped off fucking Blue Mouse. Um, and this is called Down 2019. And it was about two people that get stuck in the elevator on Valentine's Day weekend. Oh. And the elevator gets jammed and their relationship develops, but things are not as they seem. I uh, I actually really liked this movie. I thought it was really good. It was a really good isolation horror of thinking that you know who somebody is and then finding out you have no idea who they are and then you're fucking stuck with them. And it's a real scary situation that you find yourself put into. And the two actors in this play off each other very well. I don't know where the Into the Dark movies can be found. I know our friend has them on their Plex. If they are on Hulu. Are they on Hulu. So if you're looking for, you know, maybe something light to watch in the sense that it's a, you know, it gets to it really quickly. Uh, they don't waste a lot of time. It's an easy flowing film. Um, it's a relationship horror kind of mixed with who are these people? What are they doing here? And what's going to happen? Then you'll enjoy it. And I, I recommend it. I think all of the Into the Dark movies have some value to them bubblegum yeah. horror easy to digest easy to watch um this one probably takes itself a little bit more seriously than the uh than the other one so i see i don't i don't remember if i've seen this one i don't think i have like i've seen most of them but there was a couple i just never got around to yeah i enjoyed it scott if you have some like if you want to throw on something one day maybe at work that's light and fluffy this is light and fluffy okay sweet i yeah. will definitely do that then um and yeah i actually once again brought an older watch uh which i'll probably be doing for uh at least up until halloween because this is going to be my everyone has their like halloween movie challenge type thing that they do uh this is going to be my halloween movie challenge i am our good friend dave z from the exploding heads podcast we had been talking about found footage films and he shared his top 50 like hidden gem found footage or his favorite found footage films and I copied that list and drug it over to my notebook on my phone and, you know, cleared off the ones that I've seen. And now I am going through and whatever ones that I can actually find streaming, I am going to watch that I have not seen before. Uh, So far I have watched, I think it was three. Um, Let let me go to my list real quick of the three that I've seen. Uh, So the three I have seen so far is, uh, no, I've seen four. Uh, Winner's Tape All, The Triangle, The Possession of michael king and then the one that i'm going to talk about on this episode because the other ones i enjoyed them um the possession of michael king was definitely my favorite of the three i mentioned really good creepy uh but this one is the one that i really enjoyed and this is inner inner demons from 2014 
and it is, uh, let me bring up the synopsis. It is, uh, follows an intervention style reality show crew that films an episode about a 16 year old girl, a former, uh, a student who is fighting addiction, but may in fact be suffering from something even more destructive, demonic mm. possession. Uh, this film was really creepy and also covers addiction in a very realistic way and like how it affects the family and like how how someone ends up becoming addicted from stuff that may have happened in family history and all that shit. Uh, the main girl in this, uh, what is her name? Uh, sorry, I'm trying to look up the name here and I Okay, I can't remember the character's name off the top of my head, so it's hard to tell the actresses, but uh, the main actress in this film, uh, she does such an incredible job of, like, being a 16-year-old that is suffering from a drug addiction problem, but also dealing with something else on top of that. And, like, she's basically using drugs to kind of keep the other thing at bay. And it is a very good, creepy found footage horror film. Like, this is one I definitely recommend. I ended up uh, finding this one on Tubi. Because uh, Tubi is freaking awesome and has a lot of these like lesser known horror films that are really well, really, really good. Um, but yeah, check out Inner Demons 2014. This was really good, really it. good acting. Yeah, I think you would like this. I'm impressed. I uh, I'm really getting back into found footage again. Yeah, I um, it's become my favorite genre of subgenre, which is crazy because you didn't even like it that much. Oh, before. I hated found footage back in the day, but like Man. now that I'm actually watching good ones, wow! Like this has become one of my favorites. I I hear you. I and you know what we have to thank for that, Dave C. Yes, Dave C. Actually watches a lot of films, and he's very knowledgeable too. What yeah. is it with being Dave, having a name Dave, and being brilliant? Right, and I mean, and I mean, Dave Z's always championed the found footage subgenre because that is like his favorite. And yeah, I'm glad that I've listened to him, and I'm glad that he shared that list with us because. Yeah, there's about 30 movies on that list I had not seen, so it gives me a lot to try to find and see if I can find them to watch. And we can't wait to share us with you, Dave. Yeah. In haunted manner. Bring Junior. Have <laughs> that threesome on that haunted hayride. <laughs> it's going to be the Exploding Heads movie. It's just us trying to combat Junior. Yes. <laughs> right? That's all it is. That's the Exploding Heads horror film. Welcome to uh, <laughs> Heather and Scott take on Junior. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'm ready for it. <laughs> Scott's like gelling his beard. I'm putting my hair gelled back in a ponytail. <laughs> <laughs> we got this. We got bottles of water to keep ourselves hydrated. Yeah, hydrated for the for the journey, for the work that we have to put into it. It'd be great. <laughs> uh, so for what's new, I uh, I've been listening to a lot of true crime podcasts and. One that's really like piqued my interest is disappeared. And I've learned a lot about the process of how different states handle the reporting of missing person and like how your age, you know, I hate to say it, your color, uh, yep. your, your race and other such things and risk factors will result in when people are actually allowed to be like considered missing and the cops will open a search or not. It's, it's very interesting. I can't tell you how many times I've been listening to this show and I've heard the family members say, well, this person, you know, the cops said this person's an adult, they can go missing if they want to. And they're like, oh. but they're a mom of three kids who just disappeared going to the grocery store. Like, it's wow. just, it's really interesting. And then how in another state that case will be taken more seriously. Anyway, um, it is originally um, an investigation discovery show that they've made into a podcast. And I binge the fuck out of this. Um, I like listening to these shows because I always think, what if I see something? What if I know somebody? What if there's some way I can help? So I always sense. do it just in case, you know, maybe I'll run across something one day and it will trigger a memory of, of a show I listen to. Uh, but it is very much horror ad adjacent because I think people going missing without a trace is, is crazy. And some of the stuff that happens or how they have suspects and they can't pin them on, pin them on something like they can't. They think they know who's involved, but they don't have enough evidence. It must, it's very, very frustrating. And I think it shows the reality of police work and investigation work. Not what we see in movies and how quickly things are resolved. So if you like true crime, it's called Disappear. 
Uh, you can just go on to any streaming service and it's part of the investigation discovery show network. Uh, I do recommend it. It's really well narrated and very well fact checked. Awesome. Yeah. I'll say like uh, those two, those two yeah, true crime podcasts are very fascinating. And like this one sounds really interesting with the way it's been like gets handled in each state. Yeah. Right. And even like across Canada too, it, it is, you know, dependent on the province and unfortunately sometimes, you know, your ethnic background as well. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, it's, it's a good little podcast. I recommend it. Nice. Um, for me, I decided to bring a uh, series that is going on right now on Shudder, and that is the 101 Scariest Horror Movie Moments of All Time. Mm. Um, they are breaking this up into four or five, like, 45 to hour-long episodes. Uh, so they, I think they release it an episode every Wednesday or Thursday. Oh, that's cool. Smart. Yeah. And, yeah, they are literally counting down 101 and going down to number one and uh this if you were a fan of the bravo's 101 scariest moments way back on tv would always play around the time of like the halloween season this is exactly what this is like it but except with that one you know it was back in like the 90s early 2000s so like the horror movies for this list are gonna be much more different uh because yeah. obviously it has a lot more of the modern horror on it has and it's got a so far there's only been two episodes and they have covered some amazing modern horror films. They've covered some, like, 80s horror films. They've covered some just, like, classics from the 50s, classics from the 60s. They they are covering everything, and they are doing a great job with it, and they are getting interviews from all sorts of different people. Uh, they have, like, uh, what was it? film historians. They have makeup effects artists like Greg Nicotero. They have even like uh, directors like uh, Bria Grant is uh, on here talking about like some of the films. Cool. Uh, and yeah, they got like even just like actors that I would never expect. Like uh, I don't know his, I think his name's Doyle from uh, Brooklyn Nine Nine, the comedy the sitcom show. Oh yeah, yeah. Like his he's on here talking about like some of his mo- like the movies that like freaked him out and stuff like that. I'm like, so it's got like a great like <clears throat> great collection of people that are talking about these horror films like in like different their different backgrounds and yeah they've covered a lot of really cool films so far and they give each film a good chunk of time too awesome i'm really gonna have to check this out um i think you would dig it and it'll introduce you to some films that you may have not heard of or have not seen yeah, before i bet it will i'm glad to hear that because we've seen a lot of films so it's sometimes yeah. hard now uh one time that would have been easy <laughs> but now i'm like oh no i've heard of it no, I've heard of it. <laughs> yeah, I've seen it. Or at least I know who it is. Yeah, I've seen it. Right. So definitely I think that uh I'm always open to learn and hear about new films for sure. That's cool. Yeah, very good. Highly recommend it, especially like anybody that's a fan of the horror and just loves these countdown type shows. This one Shudder brings it back and it's freaking awesome. They're bringing sexy back. Those other shutters don't know how to, how to act. act. <laughs> uh, all right. Well, this has been fun. We got some really cool podcasts. Well, a podcast and a show on Shutter. Talked about some older watches and some good 2022s. I guess now the only thing left is to talk about some Ukrainian horror. Yes. Uh, which we will, I will just kind of give a uh, disclaimer now that this was harder to find these movies. Oh my than, God, this uh, is fucking hard. Like Ukrainians, the, the Ukraine has a lot of horror films. They are just not very accessible to us. Um, no. So we only ended up covering three films for this category. And technically each of us are only covering two because one of the films Heather could not find. Yeah. And so she decided to cover something different. Yeah, and we just decided Ukraine. to do things a little different um with this episode because it was a struggle (laughs) unfortunately um but that's okay you know we did our best and we managed to get a couple so that's better than none um so we'll definitely come back and you know after these messages we'll be right back did you ever see a film at such a young age it left you traumatized with cinematic wounds it's a dead issue man don't don't push it cinema psyops is a weekly podcast documenting an ongoing experiment on the mind of an unwilling test subject no one should have to watch this movie oh no one should have to watch this. no one should have to watch this movie surprisingly it's not a topic that a lot of people really want to tackle i'm shocked crude i know really right it's the next sexual frontier that no one wants to explore i am in the most sincerest of senses disappointed in you 
It takes a powerful goddess like Connie, jam her arm down the monster's throat and kill it. Oh, I'm still tripping out over that. Even as a kid, I was like, I gotta find a girl like that. Every week, I, I get a new look of disappointment that I never thought I could get it's out of. Unimaginable. At 12 years old, you should not be watching this. Obviously. At 13, you should not be. 14, you should be. I'm not entirely sure even 17-year-olds should be watching this. Just because you're offended by something doesn't mean that you have the right to demand that it doesn't exist. Watching this film again, I had all of this, like, little nerd glee with everything Dude, that kept Little history up. doll yeah, popping up absolutely. at you. So I totally loved this film. Hey, I know why you, you know, couldn't see that. It's because your brain's warped watching this shit at 12 years old. Yeah, this is this is a rough movie. I told you ahead of time when we were getting ready to do it that it was How did you watch movie. this shit at 12? Because physical wounds heal, cinematic ones don't. Listen to Cinema Psyops. Welcome back. Uh, today, we are going to be talking about, well, with what we could access, Ukrainian horror. Um, weirdly enough, the two films I watched were in English with Ukrainian yeah. spoken in it. Yep. Which I think it's the same language, though, you said. People That's, in Russian Ukraine speak the same language? Uh, they share the language. Uh, there are some uh, dialect differences, I believe. Okay. And okay. Like, some words may mean something else in Ukraine compared to Russia. Fair enough. Fair enough. Um, yeah, I didn't know that. I thought that was really interesting. But uh, we'll talk about the one fitting. The one that we both were able to access is the first one. So yeah. we can at least talk about that one. We'll do similarly what we did before, which is where Scott will introduce the film. I'll give my thoughts. Scott will give his thoughts. And we'll talk about whether we recommend it or not. So I'll let Scott lead us in. All right, so yeah, the uh, first film we are going to be talking about uh, can be found on Tubi, and it is called Ghoul, released February 26, 2015. While researching a cannibalism epidemic in the Ukraine, three Americans come face-to-face with the evil spirit of the region's most violent serial killer and cannibal. Uh, yeah, so my thoughts on this, like, I believe that this is actually based off of a real-life Ukrainian ser- serial killer. Like that was a, yeah. that like did cannibalize people, ch- mm-hmm. women, children didn't matter. Mm-hmm, um, mm-hmm. But yeah, this is a found footage horror film, uh, and yeah, I really enjoyed this one. It, I agree. Yeah, like it had it was uh, very well acted. It definitely uh, it was all shot in Ukraine. Uh, just had some American actors with like mm-hmm. using Ukrainian speaking uh, characters that were like from the area mm-hmm. because. Like, this film crew just kind of goes out and, like, starts doing interviews, and, like, they get someone that can translate for them, and the one that, like, deals with, like, the witch, uh, witchcraft and folklore yeah. of the area, and, yeah, like, I thought, I found this to be really creepy. I really liked all the characters. Like, I love the tension that is built up in this. I love the backstory and lore of this, because uh, it turns into be, turns out to be, like, a supernatural horror film. Like, most found footage films tend to be, for the most part. Um and this one is done very well. It's got some very creepy moments. Uh, and I really liked that there was like the true history of the serial killer implemented into this. Yeah, I, I actually used to work with a lady who was from Ukraine and very superstitious. She was a very superstitious person. She believed in like the evil eye, a lot of witchcraft stuff. Um, so I thought that played out really well in this film. I thought it really did reflect Ukrainian folklore and culture very, very well. And of course, there's always the trope of these Americans coming in that don't believe it. And they Mm -hmm. think it's hogwash. And I don't know if it was Americans or any kind of outsiders. You could even say Westerners, you know, Westerners coming in and being like, oh, you're just part of a simple little village. You don't know um even the translator seemed unsure and was kind of just doing her job like yeah sure lady okay yeah and and then you realize that it it was it was very accurate to evil spirits being there and being invoked and i thought it wasn't over sensationalized with the possessions the possessions were very realistic Mm -hmm. right um the way they summoned the demons was very realistic a very solid found footage film. I'm sad we missed out on this one um, in 2015, or I missed out on this one in 2015. I, I think that's yeah. a real shame, to be honest. I, I thought, I think it's really fucking good. I think more people should watch it. Yeah, I think this one was just overlooked because, uh, you know, it's probably didn't get a wide push because yeah. of being, being like Ukrainian. Like, because a lot of these films probably don't get a lot of that attention because they are, 
from a smaller country that is like a newer country that is like now producing films like and yeah. this may have just been overlooked or just may not have had a way people may not have had a way of accessing it till Tubi came out right um right. and yeah like this one is one uh found footage film that i believe needs to be seen because it is really good it's really creepy and yeah like like the folklore and it's really good uh i do love the possession of this because uh the possession comes in like it's the voice of the serial killer and he, the way he speaks like through these other people is creepy as fuck. There are some moments where like they are one person is possessed while having sex with another person and they scratch them and it makes yeah. them easily to be possessed themselves and, and well, they and don't remember any of it. person is like that. masturbating, I believe. Yeah, and yeah, then there's another one where the woman's masturbating and she has no recollection of it. Yeah, like it uh, sounds like me from last night only... Uh... <laughs> Were you possessed by a demon? No, I was possessed by rosé wine. That's what I was fucking possessed by last night. Rosé wine that I think wasn't uh, wasn't made properly. Um, <laughs> something was wrong with it. But not me. I'm not the problem. The wine is the problem. <laughs> Just like, I'm not the reason I eat people. The demon's the reason I eat people. Uh, but this film, I, for me, it was a folklore. I always do enjoy when you take a country's folklore and you treat it with respect. And I yeah. think this film treated Ukrainian culture with respect. Um, you start off thinking, and even then, they don't always, they don't paint them as like simpletons for believing what they believe. They're just like, oh, they're crazy. She's bipolar. They're trying to find out all the westernized reasons that we would say, you know, someone who believes they're a witch and all this other stuff, right? Yep. And I think and the reason being is because the filmmakers and everyone that actually was involved with making this film is Ukrainian. Yes, absolutely. Like, I didn't think that they were disrespectful at all. I thought that they were, I, I and as I said, knowing someone quite well who uh, grew up in Ukraine and was very superstitious, uh, this is very reflective of some people from Ukraine's culture. Yeah. And who are we to say they're wrong? you know who are we as westerners to walk in and be like no no that's not a thing right like, you know like witchcraft and stuff like that is still like i know we have witchcraft here in western culture but it's still very much something that's seen as like he 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 witches he 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 funny <laughs> Ooh, hocus pocus Ooh, the witches Ooh. or satanism yeah like it's seen as a joke and i don't mean that as any disrespect to any wiccans that are out there I think it's a serious religion, but I think in Western society, people use it as comical. It's a costume. Some people believe it, but I would say the mass population, well, Christianity is still very much because white people are the loudest yep. and white people are mostly Christian. So, you know, that of some branch or some descent. So that kind of tends to kind of overtake the airways. But I, I do think in other countries where they believe in you know wiccan and and witches and stuff i think this is a really nice modern day representation of what a modern day witch is yes. um you know what i mean i i think it kind of gives you a good little sneak peek on that and you know even though we didn't have many ukrainian films this one was better than sometimes us watching for like half-ass films you know right I mean? exactly like this was like a legit good movie it was, and it, and I think it handled the folklore stuff really, really well. Yep, I completely agree. Like this is worth a watch, especially if right. you're a fan of found footage. Check this out. Right. Um. I guess I'll talk about the next one. I'll just bring it in. Let it snow. Released September twenty second, twenty twenty. A snowboarder battles the elements and a mass snowmobile rider who's out for blood. Scott and I watched this last year. Scott doesn't remember anything about it. Yeah, I'll say I, I vaguely remember like just the chase scenes of like the guy on the snowmobile. Like right. I don't remember much else. So this movie was one of the few movies we found that were considered Ukrainian and also <laughs> accessible to us. <laughs> I chose to watch this one because that's what I could get my hands on. So I this movie is very much a slasher film, and it takes place using the whole revenge plot line. Think Red Dot, only a little bit different. Uh, it is filmed in a mountain resort, a group of, you know, American couple, of course, comes to see you to this resort and the people that work there speak in Ukrainian and they want to go on this like black diamond special fucking mountain thing. And of course they're warned not to, because there's been many a death there. But do you think 
a bunch of American tourists are going to listen to that, Scott. We're American. Don't you tell us what to do. Right? They're like, no, we want to go on Black Diamond and die. So that's our choice. Freedom. That's our choice. So, of course, there's this awkward interaction between the hotel staff clerk who, you know, dark jet, black hair, piercing eyes, kind of looks like a vampire. And is like, hey, don't go. And they're like, no, we're going to go. And they go. So they something happens to the guy and there's a chase scene. Basically, there's a snowmobiler who, who's taking revenge on people who have died on this mountain. Or people who come to this mountain because one of their family members was killed skiing by a snowmobile. And now the snowmobiler goes out and tortures someone until they kill themselves. <laughs> There's also a random character that lives in the mountains who speaks Ukrainian. Um, who I, I assume is just there living off the land and offers to help this girl. But something happens to him. Uh, it's, it's very much a typical paint by numbers, Ukrainian revenge film. What I did think was interesting is how they use the snow effectively in the weather climate. Um, you know, this is a great isolation in the snow horror and trying to survive. Uh, you know, it does challenge the concept of an eye for an eye. And it does kind of give that, you never know what's going to happen when you go away to a different country kind of spin to it. Uh, it was made by Ukrainian people. It was a Ukrainian film. Uh, so it's, it's, it's definitely something if you're interested in the take on revenge horror kind of, and not overly slasher because you don't really see any clear kills or anything, but the suspense of using the snow in isolation, it's a decent enough film. But compared to something like Ghoul, uh, that really, I think, represents the Ukrainian culture a lot, where this has like just the gravestone that's written in Ukrainian, and then they cross off how many more people. The person that's responsible for doing all the killings, of course, is connected to, you know, the person that died, and they make a kind of a cross off of all the people that they kill. Uh, you know, I guess that's interesting. <laughs> but to me, it wasn't as strong as possibly the film that you saw when it comes to Ukrainian culture. Yeah, I'll say that's probably pretty accurate. Uh, and I just looked because I was curious. I'm like, I can't remember what I given Let It Snow, but apparently I gave it a three and a half out of five. So I enjoyed it when I watched it. It's just unfortunate yeah. that I don't remember much from it now. Yeah, that happens. So we've seen a lot of movies. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I guess we could jump into the one that I was able to watch. Uh, this one, you were not able to find, like, you were able to find it to rent, but we try to make it, like, cheap for us while we, like, do these shows, like, where we don't, neither of us have to rent something if we don't have to. Well, and by the time, I'll be honest, by the time I was able to find it, um, I, it was too late for me to watch it. Work's been really busy. I had to travel right. out to uh, another camp. Anyway, I just wasn't able to. So we decided to just split it up in case I didn't have a chance to. I thought I was going to maybe get a chance to, but I didn't. Uh, but I have access to it as of today. So I can watch it if you recommend it. Okay. Um, so yeah, this movie that we are talking about is called While We Sleep, which was released September 30th, 2021, which, yeah, for, you know, 2021, I shocked we'd ever heard of this one. And that was like not on anything like yeah. that, anybody, like any of our uh, Plex accounts that we have. Um, but this was a... Or like Tubi, it, or yeah. Prime, yeah, or like Shutter. Any, like any of the streaming, bit, like, yeah, like, uh, this is on Amazon Prime in the U.S. now. Oh, it's not That's, on Canada. I would even sign up for a free channel or something to, like, watch it. Right. Nope. This was, uh, that, that was, like, I, at first I thought it was one of those where you looked it up and it's on Amazon, but it says not available or whatever, because that's how it looked on my phone. But when I clicked on it, it says, watch here. I'm going, oh, I guess I can watch it. Nice. So it is it is on Prime for the U.S., um, but this is definitely a, uh, oh, I'll do the synopsis first. A radiologist yeah. tries to uncover the source of a 13-year-old girl's sleeping disorder and discovers something far darker than she could have imagined. Um, this is kind of like what we were talking about with Ghoul and Let It Snow. This was Ukrainian made. Everyone like behind the camera was Ukrainian. Uh, like uh, It was filmed in Ukraine. I think it was actually filmed in Kiev. Uh, cause that's where a lot of this takes place, nice. which is their capital. Um, and I, I found this movie to be okay. Like it's very. I watched the trailer, by oh, the way. You... I did. Okay. I watched a couple trailers, and I and I read about it, so I could at least contribute somewhat. It okay. came. It gave me the impression that this was a ghost story. Am I right? Like possession ghost story. It was definitely like yeah, possession demon okay. possession demon possession. Okay. 
Um, okay, I'll, I'll let you continue and I'll add in stuff as I saw things and ask okay. about it. Yeah, it's very paint by numbers, so like it did nothing new there. Like it yeah, was, it's like that in the trailer. <laughs> yeah, it was very, very predictable. Like yeah. a lot but, of jump uh, scares, right? Yeah, jump scares, like just yeah. kind of like it seemed very westernized with the mm, way. It yeah, that's westernized too. Like it looked like it was like an American family that's in Ukraine, right? Uh not like kind of sort of. Uh, so okay. the father is American, the mother is Ukrainian born, moved to America, then came back with her with their daughter and the family right. to work as a radiologist in Ukraine. Okay. Okay. And uh yep, so the daughter was born in America and coming over to this country, you know, having to learn like try the food and all that stuff and make new friends and learn to speak Ukrainian. And what I found like I found the acting to be all decent to good, had some creepy moments to it. What I found was very strange about this was that I would say I was wrong when I said one third of the film. I would say about a quarter of the film, maybe a little less than that, is spoken in the Ukrainian language. However, there are no subtitles, no nothing in the options or anything. Like when I clicked on subtitles, all it showed when they were speaking Ukrainian was speaks in foreign language and then doesn't like tell you what they are saying. So at first I'm going, okay, maybe this is to make you feel like, you know, you are an outsider in this country coming in, not knowing what's actually being said, you know, cause I know some films do that, but with you following the characters that know and speak the Ukrainian language, but also are American and speak American, you figured there would have been subtitles to like show because who they were talking to was the mother who obviously speaks Ukrainian as well and understands what they are saying to her. So you figured they would have showed subtitles just to kind of like let you know what she is hearing, but it, they didn't, which I found very off-putting and weird and not in an off-putting in a good way. Just kind of like a, well, I feel like I'm missing part of the story because of this. Um, mm. But all in all, this movie was not bad. Like it very paint by numbers, very generic. Um, not a horrible watch. I'd say it was like a three out of five, like, you know, above average. Um, and just, I did find it fascinating that it was like, like the family part of it was from Ukraine that came, they come back to Ukraine. And I find that it's interesting that so far, like at least with the films that we've covered, like that is their in major English speaking roles with a bit of Ukraine. So it makes me almost think like they, uh, the Ukrainian people that make these films kind of look up to the Western style of filmmaking. So they make it more English based. I don't know, but like, it's very fascinating that they do that. Um, but yeah, this one is, if you are a fan of like the demonic possessions, this isn't anything new, but this isn't uh, anything bad either. It's just very, just paint by numbers, easy to watch. And being something that, you know, from Ukraine, I'd say give it a watch. I mean, it's different. It's, I mean, it's not different, but it's like unique that it's a Ukrainian film kind of taking on the westernization of demonic possession and the way filming is done. Because yeah, it has like a lot of the, loud music jump scares and stuff like that where a lot of like the foreign films that we watch don't use those music cues to scare you so it's kind of interesting that they like they've almost kind of adapted our style of filmmaking if you know what i'm saying yeah i could tell that from the trailer like it looked very much like you know it's funny recently i saw shutter 2008 and I saw the original Shutter 2004. First of all, the original Shutter 2004 is in Thailand. The American remake is when they're in Japan, mm -hmm. and which not the same country. No. <laughs> um, but anyway, I I felt like that was the same thing there too. I when I watched the trailer for this and I read about it, I was like, oh man, like this looks like a Ukraine film that's trying to capture an American audience, but include the Ukraine language and some cultural stuff. But yeah. at the same time, making it there, because you can tell in the trailer that it's full of jump scares, just like when you watch a Conjuring movie. Yeah. <laughs> and like, you know, the whole thing's going to be like, like, it totally looked like that. Um, so, and I get it, like, I get it, you know, probably uh, like check, like getting to an American audience is what you want to do, right? Like yeah. that's where you want to connect. I, I'm not faulting Ukraine for doing that at all. Um, I just think that it's a shame that we couldn't get access to the really good stuff that probably is a lot better. And maybe we just have to dig for it. Like, I mean, even renting, like there was stuff I couldn't even rent. Yeah. Um, like I had like zero access to these films. Right. Like it wasn't like, you know, I know we talked about us not getting while we, while we slept. 
um, on YouTube. But it was also because that was like an 18th choice compared to like all the other films that looked better. Yeah. Um, and unfortunately, we didn't even have access to those. So hopefully one day we do. Maybe some of them will get dropped to the shuddy. Um, but I think Ghoul, which we happen to both watch together, was the strongest. And that's free yes. on Tubi. So I think that if you want to see some really great Ukrainian folk horror and a really respectful reflection of the Ukrainian culture, and they did have a famine, you know, like that country has continued to go through fucking hell. Let's not forget, not to get too political here, the war in Ukraine is still happening. Oh, yeah. Like, and, and it's just news has just basically stopped covering it because it's you know, not new anymore. It's not new and it's still happening. And of course, you know, uh, Scott and I covered Russia as well because we also understand that people of Russia are not responsible for what's happening in the Ukraine. And we still want to give support to filmmakers and people from that country because... Mm -hmm. They are not the ones that are making the decision to do that. So this was just meant us doing these two episodes back and forth to show respect, support for both countries. Um, and hopefully, man, hopefully things there, hopefully Russia stop, like hopefully Putin stops being an asshole and trying to invade Ukraine and Ukraine can get back to functioning and like a like a country that's not in the state of war and can hopefully come out with some more movies that we can get access to and other forms of art and their people get back to a normal functioning. Yeah, because it's unfortunately with everything that's gone on, they're they are they have been pushed back decades because now they're gonna have to if like everything kind of freaking settles down whenever that happens, they are gonna have to rebuild a lot and re just kind of like build themselves as a, as a society, which is sad. Um, lady I work with, I work out with at the gym was telling me that uh, they uh, they hosted a Ukraine family that came here, mm. and um, we we led into Canada because uh, we're obviously a sponsorship bringing people over from Ukraine who we can, and restarting their lives with their daughter, and they got an apartment, so they stayed with them for a couple months, got used to the area began to strengthen their English. Um, they got an apartment. Their daughter is starting school right now. And they're repicking up. Like, these are people that had good jobs. Right. And had to leave fucking everything behind and come here. Like, Scott and I cannot even fucking imagine what that's like. No. Like, in a million years. So, you know, I really hope as, you know, as time goes on, we get to see more from this country. Um because I do think that Google is a great example of what they can do. And I hope to get other stuff. And, you know, it's so cheesy when people say pray for Ukraine. I don't think that, but like, let's be grateful and not forget that that's still happening there and support however you feel comfortable, wherever you can. Yes. Um, agreed. Right. So anyway, I guess we'll move to our out of the dark segment. Now this was introduced by Dave, um, Dave Bailey. Sorry. Um, and he suggested it to us in a chat. Yeah, and I thought it was a very interesting topic. Um, so yeah, I'll jump into that. So it's, he asked us the question and he said, you know, feel free to use this as not of the dark discussion if you want. But he goes, do we consider saying didn't see that coming or there is a twist in this movie to be a spoiler for the film? Which, yeah, it brings up an interesting topic because I think to some people, they want to go in as blind as absolutely freaking possible. And I see where he's bringing this up because, yeah, if you say, well, I didn't see that coming or I didn't expect this twist, it will give the impression for someone that's watching this to look out for said twist or something like that. So I can see it being brought up as kind of a spoiler in a way. I guess it just all really depends on the person and what they consider a spoiler. Yeah, I I think that it works two ways, right? If I say I didn't see it, there's a, like, if I'm like, okay, let's say you've never heard of the movie Us, yes, okay? Or you've just seen like Jordan Peele with the trailer and the scissors. And I'm like, man, Us, what a great film. Man, there were twists in that that I didn't see coming. I don't think that's a spoiler at all because yeah. I haven't given anything away about the film. I haven't really said anything for, if I'm going to say, man, the, um, the new orphan movie man what a twist in that film well if you've seen the original orphan which is most people have you know that what the already the twist is <laughs> so if i'm saying there's a new twist i guess you could to me that's not a spoiler i guess what a spoiler would be and i do do this by just to be clear um i'll say oh well, the movie went this way this and this happened and then there's a twist 
Mm -hmm. Um, We do that a lot in the movies that we cover, especially in our categories. I say especially in our what we watched because we're trying to be vague. Yeah. Right. So I, I definitely have given spoiler in spoilers in what we've watched um, in that sense. But like, I don't, if someone says to me, there's a twist, I don't spend the whole movie going, is it the twist? 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 Like, I don't, I'm like, okay, I know something's going to be happening here. I wonder what it's going to be. Yeah. Like, uh, like to me, it just makes me want to watch it more. Right. I was going to say for me, it does. I don't consider it a spoiler because yeah, like, it makes me pay more attention to the film, yeah. I guess you would say, because it's like uh, an example, Fall, when you yes. talked about Fall and said, did I did not expect that twist. Yeah, yeah. So when I was watching, I'm going, okay, well, that's if that's the twist, how did Heather not catch that? Like, it made yeah. me start questioning, but then I was like, oh, gotcha, okay. Like, yeah. So it does change, like, your thoughts a little bit, because in the movie Fall, I would not have expected a twist. What happened? No, no. You think it's going to be pretty straightforward. Right? Yeah. So like, right. I can see how like it can kind of be considered like to some people that are very adamant about knowing absolutely nothing about a movie to be a spoiler. But like I keep those thinking people... Daisy's mind, like Daisy's name is flashing in front of me in big neon lights because I feel <laughs> like, you know, and we don't mean that in a bad way, Dave. No. Like, that is just who you are. You don't want, like, personally, I don't give a fuck if people tell me the ending of a movie. Like, it doesn't ruin it for me. If, like, Scott went and saw Halloween Ends and was like, oh, by the way, yet again, I have no idea what's going to happen in Halloween Ends, people, okay? And he's like, oh, yeah, Lori dies, and um, What's-Her-Face dies, and Michael wins and goes on. I'd be like, all right. <laughs> like, I still have to watch it. Yeah. Like, it would not ruin it for me. But I'm not – I respect that for some people it does. Yeah. And I was going like, to say, yeah, because Dave Z is one that I also pictured in my mind because he does like to go in as blind as possible. Yeah. He doesn't watch trailers. He doesn't. He likes to bird box it. Yes, exactly. Like, the only thing that he goes off of is people's opinions of the film without spoilers – and his uh cover test yeah that he likes to do which you know he seems to be pretty spot on with a lot of the time um and so yeah like i like yeah dave z you are definitely one that i thought of with this but like i think even when we say there's a twist as long as we're not saying what the twist is or like oh my god it's a big twist i don't think it really bothers you that much because i think you would probably said something to us at this point well we do have conversations a lot may have but also at the same time dave knows that's our show and that's our style like i couldn't see dave walking in there and being like change it for me right no no exactly right like so i i agree i i think he probably doesn't like hearing anything about a movie that's coming but like i yeah i i find that okay and this is just my opinion i find that people get way too sensitive about this shit i really do i we live in the series and in an age of instant information instant technology um like if you don't like I there's a lot of times that I record AEW for example and I don't watch it till the next day yeah you know if I went on Instagram I could see the results and if I choose to go on Instagram and I I choose to read what AEW has then I am kind of walking into that spoiler zone why should I think that people shouldn't talk about movies just because I haven't seen it? Like, yeah. you know what I mean? I, I, I think that it's a big, big world. And if you want to be somebody who's so blind sided when you go into a movie, that's okay. Like, don't get me, don't get me wrong. That is absolutely fine. But then you can't really listen to any podcasts or. <laughs> right. I was going to say like, right? like yeah, because like you know? on social media, like for example, TV series that are going on right now, or a movie that is in theaters right now, like Barbarian, I would get like obviously even if something's spoiled for me, I don't care. I'll still watch it because it's the journey for me. Yeah, but I can get why people would be upset like when they see like because I even get annoyed by it when I see someone talk like say someone started talking about Barbar- Barbarian and completely just like talked about everything about that film like right out in the open and be like come on dude like this is still fresh in theaters at least wait like at least put hey spoilers in the comments or if you want to talk if you've seen this film and you want to talk about it please message me that's that's just because I want to be respectful because that's how I do it like oh my god I just watched this I want to talk about it if anybody that's seen this wants to talk about it, message me, please. That's just how I am. Yeah, I get what you're saying, Scott. I, I like the idea of putting spoiler, but I really don't think someone should have to limit themselves. I really don't. Like, 
you know, we got people fucking spouting off about way worse shit on the internet that people should be upset. Oh, about. yeah, that's true. I mean, you this, know, this like, is just like first world problems for sure. Right. Absolutely. And I and I'm not trying to compare the two, but I just look at it like I agree. I think if you're going to put spoilers, I think you should warn people. I think you should say something like spoilers in this post. Absolutely. Yeah. But I and I think it's great that you're so considerate. Like honestly, I think that's a great trait of yours, and I'm not criticizing at all. But I don't go on the internet and get upset if I I, I don't. I don't fucking care. Like I'll be yeah, honest, I, I don't fucking care. Like yeah, if, like if I like when Game of Thrones was first airing and all that stuff, like in the like it was going episode by episode each week, and I just so happened to get online and I didn't get a chance to watch the episode yet, and someone spoils it, I'll be like, huh, oh well. I wouldn't like comment, thanks for spoiling it, asshole, or anything like that. I wouldn't throw a fit about it. I'd just be like, well, that's my own damn fault. Should have known better. Right. And like here's the thing, and and I understand the you know, I understand like us as podcasters and I thought about what Dave said and I don't think he was criticizing us by any stance. Yeah. Um, but I thought about it. I thought, yeah, you know, maybe I should try when we do our, you know, our, our new watches to not, you know, not talk about the movie and then go, oh, and there's a twist. So I'm giving too much information away. Right. So like if I was talking about Get Out and most people have seen Get Out. So I feel pretty comfortable spoiling that fucking movie. If you haven't right. seen Get Out, like, I don't know, go watch it. So if I was talking about good out on our like what's new section or what we've been watching, I was like, oh, man, it's really great. Like this interracial couple goes to her parents place and, you know, there's this really subtle racism that they're doing. and You're not really sure what's going on. And, you know, you think she's in support of him, but then there's a twist. Yeah, that is kind of given a lot of way. Right. Like, yeah. I've already set up the, the, the first half of the fucking movie. <laughs> Right? like and indicated that we thought she's supportive and then i said there's a twist yeah right so like i i get how that would be a spoiler but if i was being like oh man there's this great cop movie about an interracial couple um and the perceptions that they get about their relationship and there's a twist yeah that's i do not i don't think that's a spoiler i don't i think that's very much me just being like this movie is twist and turns. So it's a really interesting topic. I personally will try to not give too much away. You know, I'll try to keep some of my goods into myself. You know? You yeah, that's know, why that's I it. that's why I talked like I did about uh Barbarian. Because mm -hmm. that one is one of those where it's like uh knowing knowing less about that film will make it even more interesting for you to go see in theater. Absolutely. And I think that. You know, you always have friends that you have the different relationship with. Like, off the air, Scott and I will talk about a movie and he'll see something like, oh, fuck, you can spoil it for me, Scott. Like, you think I'm going to like it? <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, like, you you know me. I always ask first, like, do you mind mm. if I spoil it? Mm -hmm. I don't care. Most of the time, I don't give a shit. Right. Um, Especially, like, especially, like, really dumb shit. Like, like I'll be honest, like, I need the screen movies. I don't care. Right. Um, you know, unless it's even, even like, nope. Like, uh, we are in a chat group with... Uh, Brandon or like Scott, I and Brandon or like, and they both saw Nope long before I did. And they were like, oh no, don't put, like, they were really trying to be considered not good spoilers. I'm like, guys, I don't fucking care. I'm still going to watch it. Like, it won't matter because right. I am somebody who can read the ending of the book and then go back and read the rest. Yeah. Like, because it's me, the it's journey. Yeah. Like, it's just not a big deal, you know, but I respect that it is. So I am going to try to, for some people, and I am going to try to change that. So I'm really glad that they brought this up. Dave Bailey. Uh, it's also known as a stripper named Sander King. Uh, and I, I know, it's Sander. Mm, Sander. Um, brought this up because I think it's valid. I think it's a valid point to to think about and you know i'm gonna try when we're doing our, our what our you know what we've watched the new releases and stuff to not give too much away yeah like it's, right? it's it brought up a good discussion i think like it's it's very interesting because i never thought of it that way i you know i think i think sander was like low-key giving a shit um <laughs> and trying to be like oh it'd be a great it would be a great uh topic for out of the dark heather um scott they them heather dog heather <laughs> uh, right because um yeah i definitely think i spoil shit more than you do yeah i remember like when we first started the show you used to give me give me crap because i would spoil things more than you and i oh now i'm done now i'm like oh yeah and then like <laughs> yeah because i had to rein you in on they them i'm like heather mm -mm. I know. I'm just like, no one's gonna watch it, Scott. I'm just gonna complain. Um, what, what was it? What would be like me being like, I don't know, terrifier. I'm gonna say this spoiler for terrifier. And then it's not even the girl at the beginning that beats him. Right? Like, yeah. 
Oh, which by the way, Terrifier 2 is coming out. Yes, and uh, yeah. I am excited because I found out it is playing at the Flint Theater that I always go to on October 6th. And if I just so happen I can't make it to that one, I found out it's playing at the historic Howell Theater where we went and seen Gremlins and Black Christmas, or Gremlins because we left before Black Christmas, but it's playing there on my birthday. Ooh. Ooh. Yeah, so I can either Ooh. see it on the 6th or the 8th. So I have two two days that I'll be able to go see it. Are you going to go by yourself? Uh, if I go to the one in Flint, it'll be me and my buddy Justin. Oh, very nice. Justin is like your new movie friend. Well, he's always been my movie friend. Like uh, we had, we just had not been able to get together recently. But we used to before we were before we did this show, him and I would always meet up for a matinee showing. Like uh, we we wouldn't seen Get Out together. Uh, we wouldn't seen Midsommar together. Like we would just meet up because he lives not far from that theater either, and he goes to the theater for where we are the type that watch everything horror. He is the type that watches everything, all genres. So he goes to the theater a lot. Like he watches every genre. Like he is the founder of the Talking Films Facebook page. And there's a reason. He is a movie buff in general, where we are the horror movie buffs. And so he watches everything. So he's always at the theater. And yeah, whenever there's a horror film, we usually try to reach out to each other and go, hey, you're going to go see a matinee of this. You want to join? Fuck yeah, let's go get together. Let's get a couple people together that we know. So yeah, he like, and it's cool because yeah, we did kind of like fade away from doing that for a while, I think, because of the pandemic and all that stuff happened. And then, and now we are reconnecting and doing that more often again. It's nice. You guys can do that together and have a movie watcher. Yeah, exactly. I have some. Does he also <laughs> eat a lot of popcorn? uh yeah he does nice i love it i respect the game yeah like i had a giant bucket of popcorn last night and i will be going back to the theater today back to the theater today to see pearl with justin i will probably not get popcorn because i'm a bit popcorned out because i ate a huge bucket of popcorn last night so i think i'll probably switch to like candy or something for today no you're sweet enough as it is Scott. oh you oh you <laughs> Pshaw. Pshaw. um well thank you everyone for joining us as always um we are proud members of the legion podcast network uh on this network you can find a variety of different shows you just can search them in your uh wherever you listen to podcasts they also have a patreon feed on the patreon feed they have early release shows giveaways i know they're giving away codes every month so being part of Patreon for $3 a month is a great deal. And if you're not a member of Patreon yet, Scotty just wants to know. What are you waiting for? <laughs> what are you waiting for? What are you waiting for? Uh, what are you waiting for? Join today. Um, thank you, as always, for listening. And thank you to Dave Bailey, Sandra Kane. Uh, for not just only your movie suggestions, but for a great suggestion for our out of the dark topic. Uh, well, thank you, my friend. That it definitely fun. challenged my perspectives of how I present movies, and I'm going to try to be more considerate of those who don't like spoilers at all. In other words, just bitches. In other words, I'll be keeping an eye on how Heather starts talking about new films, and I will, <laughs> I will treat her like I treat my cats and spray her with a bottle of water. Eh, stop. Eh, hey, stop. Squirt, squirt. Stop. And I'm like. <laughs> <laughs> It'd be great. And uh, what's our next country, Scotty? What do you think we should do next? Uh, I am thinking maybe Indonesian. Ooh, there's some good Indonesian films. Yeah, and I was thinking, like like I said, we can drag this out for like the rest of the year, I think, because I just forgot to. Like, I've also forgot. We got South Korean films we haven't even covered yet either. Oh, my gosh. Are we going to watch fucking Train to Busan? I mean, we could. It's been a long oh I've only God. watched it the one time, and that left a fucking mark on me. I know. We could just talk about it now. You can watch it again and be like, a part where the twist happened? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there are some amazing South Korean films. There really are. Um, yeah, we'll definitely keep doing Around the World, Around the World like the Daft Punk song you know what I'm talking yeah. about yeah. around the world around <laughs> the world this guy's getting down I'm excited now because uh when we do finally cap off our uh like around the world stuff with you know stuff from your province and my state I can now add Barbarian to the list of movies filmed in Detroit that we could possibly talk about if you've seen oh it you I I would love to I'll definitely watch it despite what Dave thinks that I won't like it <laughs> I don't care what you think Dave it's gonna be my number one fucking movie of the year Ooh. I already called it Barbarian, number one movie of the year, Dave. 
number yeah, I, I honestly don't think one. it will be your number one. You're going to like it, but I doesn't don't think matter. It number one movie of the year, Dave. This is a Scotty film right here, for sure. Well, it's a Heather film, too. <laughs> hey, my name's Scott and Dave. We're best friends. We're going to make necklaces together. <laughs> Scott jumped on his water. <laughs> Right. oh that's great <laughs> maybe if i was tim davis is like well maybe if you weren't such a bitch heather maybe <laughs> more people would like you <laughs> you rude bitch oh i love the dynamic we all have so when I, so we're in this group chat gosh Scott's of the funniest shit so i added rob humphreys to this group chat who's also an excellent podcaster um i've shouted out former champion of the hungry belt wow oh, oh, wow <laughs> oh my and like prob said something and scott was like show me on my body where you were touched or something like that and i haven't been able to stop thinking about that <laughs> that was really fucking funny scott <laughs> i can be clever and witty sometimes <laughs> show, show me on my body where you were touched that was that was good <laughs> that was really good um you're a textrovert you yes. know you are a textrovert in person you're like oh the doll doll but in text, <laughs> yeah, exactly. you're like fucking fire you can say the funniest shit ever it's amazing um what else was i gonna say to you i was gonna say something else about like oh are you a okay so there will be a little bit of a delay in our recording because i am away for work in two weeks oh yes and that is also when i will be on vacation i believe so are you you're away as well right i possibly okay um so scott and i will talk off air but more than likely there will probably be a couple of extra weeks between our episodes uh depending what scott's doing and what i'm doing and when we can kind of connect to record again right so you may not hear from us until a month from now new well This will come out September 23rd, so our next episode may not be released till the 14th unless we decide to record on a Thursday night or something like that, which we can uh, talk about it. Yeah, because I will not be able to record the 15th for sure, which is a Saturday, I believe, because that is the, I'm hoping to go to, 12-hour horror movie marathon at that historic Howell Theater. Okay, well, I went, yeah, we would, we could just do another day for sure, that'd be fine. Um, I have that we're recording on the 16th, which is a Sunday. Oh, yeah, that's right, because we usually do Sundays. Yeah, we just slipped it up because I have child care duties right now. So, right. Um, but yeah, we'll talk about it off screen, but off air. But if for some reason there's a couple of weeks, we just don't want you guys to be concerned. We will be back in the saddle again. No, we broke up. <laughs> Dave, and it's all Dave Bailey's fault because of the spoiler thing. Thanks, Dave. Marian, thank Dave. <laughs> Now we will come and end Cemetery Gates podcast. Ooh. That's not true. Listen to them, please. They're great. They Listen are. They are hilarious and knowledgeable as shit. Yeah, we know knowledgeable. If you actually want to know shit about movies, you listen to them and Dave C. Yeah. And like, you know, or you like listen to what Jason Gray has to say. I don't know, you don't listen to us. Phil, Phil Ray, you listen to what Phil Ray has to say. We're just here for the yuck yucks. Yuck, exactly. Yuck, 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 we like yuck, to just yuck, yuck. discuss what we've watched. Yeah, we don't really we like get to, in depth. We make fun of Tim Davis. <laughs> yes, that is. That is our bread and butter of the show, making fun yeah, of Tim Davis. Like, though Tim, I think he forgets that I've said mean things about him because by the time he records, he never, like, says anything about me. Like, he's very, like, I think he just has too many other shit going on in his life. He's, like, three kids and a bunch of other shit. He's like, I don't have time for your nonsense other. <laughs> yeah, he usually will talk shit to you in the chat group instead. He does. He does talk shit to me in the chat group. I love Tim. Oh, my gosh. I just love his fluffy bumps. Oh, they're, him and Luffy are both fucking great. You want to squeeze all the goo out. Squeeze all the goo out. <laughs> anyway. Oh, you I guys... want to squeeze the goo out. Right. Oh, yeah, you do. Uh, I five, I five. <laughs> Show me on my body where he touched you. <laughs> that was funny. Anyway. <laughs> uh... Doesn't stop being funny, Scott. Anyway, thank you, as always, for joining us and supporting our show. It really means a lot to Scotty and I. Uh, do you have anything to say, Scotty, to the good people? Um, I would just say, once again, as always, thank you. Uh, we do this for fun, and the fact that you all listen yeah, clearly better. not for talent <laughs> hey, no it's just it it's a way for us to hang out and it's yeah. entertaining as hell and <laughs> the fact that you all listen and enjoy the show makes it even better uh but until next time kitties unpleasant dreams see ya